two real quick questions. Um, I love hearing the Greek words. Is, is there a real easy um, Greek for Dummies book that we can buy that's easy to use? And secondly, I, I heard some Christian speakers well, a couple months ago talking about the Book of Enoch and recommending that people contact them and get this book. And why would Christians be recommending books like that? And I, I guess I'd rather spend time in the Bible, but is, is, is that something that uh, Christian speakers could, would, should do? And what's our reaction? Now tell me again, I forgot your name. Brenda. Brenda, Brenda. Uh, well, let's start with the book of, of Enoch. Turn back to uh, the book of Enoch and I'll talk about the one you're talking about. Just before Revelation, everybody look in your Bible um, and, and look at what it says. Uh, let me find it. Where does it say, Behold, he cometh with ten thousands of his saints? There we go. Verse 14. What, what are we talking about here with this book of Enoch? Well, we're talking about something that in the Bible is a part of the uh, apocro... Have you ever realized that you say a lot more words than you've ever spelled? You know, the, uh, the apocryphal um, books. And there are also books that are called the, the pseudo-pigrapha uh, books. And um, why we have these books, Brenda, we'll just start out with how we got them. The, the first reason we have them is that, uh, that the Holy Land is dry. And because of that, if you put garbage into the sand, in the Negev, or especially in Egypt, it mummifies. Did you know that there's a whole group of people in England that have spent their life translating the garbage, the rubbish from Egypt, from the time of the pharaohs? The, the household garbage was thrown into the desert, put into the sand, a landfill. It's still there. Even the food just shriveled and mummified because it's so dry there. So that makes, you can take, you can write a book on an animal skin and if you, if, if it's buried deep enough where no animal can dig to it and the bugs didn't get to it, it's still there. So they have nonstop been finding manuscripts, uh, different leaves of, of papyrus, bits of paper, school kids, junk, you know, from going to school, dumped into the garbage heaps that is 2,000 years old, 3,000 years old. And all that stuff, they sort through it, and they have actually what it's, some of it's called the Nag, I don't even know how to spell that, Nag Amadi uh, text. Uh, and uh, there's some, I forget, there's some Rosh ones. But all that means there's different locations where they found these. And a lot of them are spiritual. Now, you've all heard of the Dead Sea Scrolls. The Dead Sea Scrolls, there's a lot of stuff in the Dead Sea Scrolls that has nothing to do with the Bible. But what they did have is a lot of good copies of the Old Testament that, that were exactly the same 2,000 years in the caves as they were today. And so we saw that the Lord's preserved his word, but there was a lot of other stuff out there that is not inspired. So basically, the book of Enoch is not inspired. But now let's look at the book of Jude. God did not inspire the book of Enoch. How do we know that? Because Jesus did not say it was scripture. I just had a teenager come up during the... the um, Seder the other night and asked me, you know, how, what was my primary reason for believing the Bible is inspired? I said, Jesus. Jesus called the three sections of the Old Testament scripture. And then he said, so the whole Old Testament, uh, this much of your Bible is inspired. And he said, I am taking care to guard over this part of your Bible by only allowing it to be in the custodianship of my apostles. And I'm going to bring all things to their remembrance, John 14 says, whatsoever I've commanded them, and they're going to have it, and I'm going to in breathe out my spirit, and they're going to write it down. So we're sure of the Old Testament because Jesus authorized every bit of it, and we're sure of the New Testament because he said his apostles were in charge. So number one, the book of Enoch, you don't need to read any more than you need to read Life magazine in 1917 or something like that. It's not biblical at all. 
It's interesting, but it has nothing to do with being on the same level. It's kind of like the Encyclopedia Britannica. It's not inspired. But how did this get in? If, if you look in Jude, remember I told you, uh, now I close my Bible, Jude 14 or something like that, just a second. First John, second John, third John, Jude. Now Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about these men saying, this next quote is from there. Isn't that interesting? And so what's interesting is it is possible to have fragments of stuff in garbage heaps that have truth in them. It doesn't mean that everything in all the garbage heaps, it doesn't mean all the Apocrypha, every word of the Apocrypha that's in the Roman Catholic Bible is wrong, or the Pseudepigrapha, or the Nagamati text, or the, any of the other ones. What it means is they're not inspired. They are nowhere at the level of Scripture. But this is, this, this line, uh, it's, not, it's not exactly what it says in the, the book of Enoch, but this quote, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment on all, is actually what Enoch said. You know how we know that that's exactly right? Because it was inspired by God and written down by none other than Jesus Christ's earthly brother, the pastor of the first church, James's brother, whose name was Jude. And James and Jude wrote inspired text, inspired by God's Spirit, that were a part of what Christ said was his word. But the book of Enoch wasn't. So, and, and I would be very careful because the closer we get, remember the devil is tipping his hand. Uh, I told you, oh, we only have three minutes left. I told you that the Muslims believe that when the Mahdi guy comes, he's going to go to Galilee and he's going to dig in the hills of Galilee. He's going to find sacred Christian scriptures and Jewish, and he's going to pull them out and he's going to read them, and Jesus is going to come. Jesus is going to come from Allah and is going to affirm that what those said is what is true. See, the devil has in his plans to bring new, and, and now, I mean, what a time to bring it. We have the Internet. If you found something in, uh, you know, in, in down in the southern tip of, of South America, right now, if someone had a cell phone and tweeted or something, it could go around the world in seconds maybe minutes. What a time to have deception. If, if the devil deceived people in the two, second millennium B.C., it took years to get out. If he did it in the turn of the millennium in the Roman times, it took weeks and months to get out. By the time we get to modern times in the telephone and telegraph, it took days to get out. Then we got to radio, and then it took hours to get out. Now it takes seconds. And you can fill the earth with with total deception and deceiving words by saying, we found a book uh, in Jerusalem near the burial place of Christ, and it's his true words. Everyone would buy it. They just, and, they, and, and Christians would start wanting, you know, the prayer of whatever, because we just love materializing and, and getting more. So the Lord says, no, only what's inspired and we know what's inspired because God is watching over his word to perform it. Jesus Christ affirmed the apostles. Now, so I hope, Brenda, I said enough about that. So Book of Enoch and every other one of those things that the Inquirer and, and all the mystic, uh, uh, you know, prayer circle so-called Christians are always getting into these mystical books that aren't inspired. Until you've mastered the Bible, I'd stay away from all that stuff. But how do you do Greek words? Two ways. Biblos is an online, and there are many. There's the Blue Letter Bible. There's tons of them. But uh, Biblos is just one example. It's very, very comprehensive, and there are many people that use many online, and you can ask people. But Biblos is one that has about 26 translations of the Bible, plus it has uh, Hebrew, the actual words, and you can touch them. And when you touch this hieroglyphic Hebrew word, it, it gives you a pop-up that tells you what... It means in English how many times uh, the original, the stem, the, you know, everything, and the same for Greek. So that's one example, uh, if, and if you want it free. Um, this is another one, Logos. This is, happens to be the one I use all the time. Uh, Logos, 
uh, I remember the first time I reviewed a copy of that in the 80s. It was two or one, I don't know, some renegade Microsoft people out of Washington State that were believers that said, why can't we use this Microsoft technology for Christians? And they started this Christian software company. And it's grown to the place now that, that personally, and I have a friend helping me, because I speak, you know, in the, the mission field so much, I'm always looking for my books, which are here, uh, all thousands of them. And so they have slowly been helping me electronically get a Logos edition of all 4,500 of my books. And I'm very close to that right now. Of every book I've ever known and loved and read, I actually have it in my laptop. Because these guys have been trying to make everything biblical, electronic, and digitalized. So Logos, though, costs money, uh, at least a hundred and something to even get started in it, and then every book is so much. But uh, online, you can start getting your feet wet with Greek and Hebrew using the Blue Letter Bible, biblos.com, and, and others along that line. 